Today, I'll be sharing with you the concept called latte factor. To its core, these are little money leaks that people overspend on which when added overtime can already fund their savings for a travel fund or an emergency fund. Here are the most common latte factors. Online shopping. More than 260 million Americans are digital buyers. The U.S. Census Bureau says Americans pay $12 for shopping online for every $100 they spend. If a family spends $60,000 annually, they would have spent $7,200,000 shopping on e-commerce platforms and other online resources. And this is only the average. Some online shoppers spend more than $1,000 on an item. Most families shell out $10 or $20 per purchase. Although the amount seems small, buying $20 worth of online merchandise every month translates to $240 annually. But that's nothing compared to the next one which some people overlook. 2. Books A paperback novel can cost you around $14 to $18. Hardbound books are costlier, with some netting as much as $25. Still, these seemingly affordable prices can trap you in the latte effect. Some people buy books every three months, while bookworms do so every two weeks. Suppose you're in the middle ground, buying books monthly. In that case, you're spending about $300 annually if you're into hardbound titles or a little under $200 if you're more interested in paperbacks. What is sinister about this is you'll never think such small purchases will dent your finances because it's a book that you can gain knowledge or get low-cost entertainment. To avoid overspending on books, I'd recommend borrowing from someone you know or reading their ebook versions online. Or if you really cannot forego buying the book, find a used one as it's much cheaper. But if you prefer a brand new one, once you're done with it, resell it at a discounted price and use that money to buy another book. 3. Eating out. One in 10 Americans dines out at least six times a week. About 6% of them make eating out a daily habit. The average American family spends about $3,500 annually eating outside the home. Some might expend more than others, but that's not all. We also love to snack, preferring a bag of chips to a healthy sandwich. Office lunches, last-minute grab-a-food escapades with friends, and other unplanned food-related expenses can consume our monthly budgets without us knowing it. Although it's fun to eat professionally prepared food, they are sometimes a hit or miss, and you'd end up overpaying for a food you could just have prepared at home. Think of this. $300 a month might seem small, but that is huge in 10 years. Four. Coffee. Two in three Americans drink coffee daily, underscoring their obsession with the beverage. Americans consume more than 146 billion cups of coffee annually, translating to a multi-million dollar industry. With a three-cup daily average, it's easy to see why people are overspending on coffee and reducing their chances of getting out of the latte effect quicksand. The Wall Street Journal says the average price for a cup of coffee is about $5. Coffee lovers spend $15 daily on their favorite beverage. Maybe you think this figure is small. That's what the latte effect wants you to believe. $15 seem affordable. It won't dent your financial security. Wait until you calculate the annual coffee expenditure, and you might be surprised to learn it's a little less than $5,500. Here's a money-saving hack on coffee I'd like to personally share with you. Whenever I make coffee at home, I use a double spout portafilter to make two drinks. I now have an Americano and a latte without ever having the need to use the next one on this list. 5. Food delivery. Eating out is expensive, and food deliveries are much more expensive. The initial markup premium is about 8 to 18 percent, reflecting the price difference between store or restaurant prices and food delivery app prices. For example, a restaurant might offer a dish for only $19. You can expect its price to be $22.42 at an 18% initial markup premium. Adding a $2.50 delivery fee, and you're looking at a little less than $25. There's also a service fee, which typically ranges from $3 to $3.50, so you'll end up paying about $30 in total for a single meal. What I do to avoid this is to just cook at home. Deliveries can take some time, and not to brag, I can cook a much better meal faster than waiting for my soggy food to arrive late. 6. Additional banking fees. Banking has never been more convenient than now. 
you could transact using your PC, smartphone, or other mobile devices. There's a catch, and you're paying for it through what's called convenience fee. For example, bank interconnectivity lets you withdraw cash from any ATM regardless of bank. The sad thing about transacting with a bank outside your bank's network involves a fee. Withdrawing money from a non-network ATM can cost you two to three dollars and fifty cents per transaction. If you're the type who likes withdrawing funds from any ATM regardless of their network affiliation, you could easily rack up at least twenty dollars a month. The only issue is if you're frequently withdrawing money from non-network ATMs, your twenty dollars could easily grow to hundreds of dollars annually. Don't risk your hard-earned money for this fee, and especially on the next one. Seven. Lottery tickets. According to CNBC, the average American spends more than $1,000 on lottery tickets annually. Surprisingly, households in the fourth 20% spend about $95 a month on pooled betting and lottery tickets. Families belonging to the second 20% spend $82 monthly. These figures seem within a family's financial reach. That's what the latte effect does. It leads you to believe that spending a small amount of money on something is harmless. We fail to realize that spending about $100 monthly equates to more than $1,000 by year's end. Some people put their fate on a $5 or $10 lottery ticket in the hope of beating the 1 in 14 million odds. And it's not a good way to lead a frugal life. 8. Gym Memberships 3 in 10 Americans spend $15 to $250 monthly for gym memberships. Although the monthly payment seems small, its annual equivalent is huge. People could spend $180 to $3,000 yearly for gym memberships alone. There's a silver lining to this, of course. It only shows an increasing awareness of the importance of exercise in modern life. The issue is that people can also exercise and perform other physical activities at home, where everything is free. Why not lift a pair of water-filled buckets to strengthen the arm muscles? You could take your bike for a spin instead of burning calories on a stationary bike. Walking to the grocery store and carrying all your items back home should help you stay fit and save money. But this one on this list is an expense that people really can't cut off. 9. Entertainment $5 might sound reasonable for a monthly subscription to iTunes. Movie buffs could spend $10 to $20 for a Netflix monthly subscription. Spotify can charge you $10 monthly for its streaming services. While these services offer exceptional entertainment, there are other activities you can do for fun without overspending, like playing an instrument, cooking, gardening, or reading a free book. Overspending can really be a challenge for most people, including me. Thankfully, I have learned some things which stopped me from doing this, and I have shared them in this next video, which you can click right here.